mayhem in the Middle East, ISIS is advancing. Today, discover what you can do to help those who are threatened by this deadly terrorist group and how their actions tie into end time prophecy on Jewish Voice. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice, a program to help you to understand the Jewish roots of your Christian faith, Bible prophecy, and world events surrounding Israel. Well, there is a crisis raging in the Middle East that's desperately calling for our attention and help. ISIS is advancing, and Christians in the Middle East are being persecuted, and if these terrorists are not confronted, we will certainly face more dangerous days ahead. It's time for the church here in the United States to step up and do something about it, to be a voice for those who are being persecuted, to pray for them and to bring about change. Here to report on what he is experiencing in the front lines in northern Iraq is the Jerusalem Bureau Chief for CBN. Please welcome my good friend, Chris Mitchell. Chris, welcome back. It's great to be with you, gentlemen. Thank you. Talk about the threat that they pose to Christians. You said that they are targeting right. Christendom. They're targeting Christians, non-Muslims. Talk about some of the what you saw in the aftermath. Well, many of the Christians who were in Mosul or in other areas, they were given four choices. Uh, the first choice they had was they could leave their homes. Uh, you know, homes that they may have lived in for years or generations. The second uh, choice they had was they could stay, but they had to pay what's called the jizya tax. This is an Islamic tax for infidels, so they can live under uh, Sharia law, but they have to pay this tax, which is sometimes exorbitant, something they couldn't afford. The third choice they had is they could convert. They could become a Muslim, and they could deny their faith. And uh, by saying what's called the shahada, the Islamic creed, in front of two witnesses. Now, the fourth choice they had was they could die. They could die by the sword. And so, given these four choices, grisly choices, most of them obviously fled. Now, we had the opportunity to meet one man. Uh, back, we interviewed a number of Christians. It was in a, uh, 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 an apartment that was probably designed for one or two families. There were maybe five or six families that were there crowded in together. We interviewed many people who were telling us about the horrific things they had seen, heads, uh, people being beheaded, hands being uh, uh, cut off. One of the men in that, in that crowded area was very nervous and sort of hovering around us as we were doing these other interviews. And finally he said, can, can I tell my story? But he didn't want to be interviewed and show his face. He wanted to be shown videotape from behind because he was still afraid of ISIS. And what happened is that a, a neighbor of his informed on him. He was told that he was a Christian. So ISIS went through his home and they found two New Testaments. And this is one of them right here. It's a camouflage New Testament. The other New Testament had an American flag on the inside. And when they discovered these two, Nestima, two New Testaments, they accused this man whose name is Fadi, and uh, they said he was going to be—he was either a missionary or a spy. And uh, during this interview, he just broke down because he had lost his livelihood, he had lost his job, lost his home, uh, lost his identification. Many, many times, ISIS was taking passports, and he just broke down and he began to weep for his uh, eight-year-old son, for his teenage daughter, for his wife that he had no livelihood and very little future. And uh, he began to ask Jesus to save him. And he also followed that, and he said, Jesus, please forgive ISIS. Wow. And, uh, wow, and this that's, was just something that's that remarkable. Uh, it was remarkable. And after we interviewed Fadi, we went over to... Uh, that's Catholic. a new believer. A new Christian is yes, saying, yeah. Father, forgive them. Exactly. Yeah, that's Exactly. And then we went across town, and we, we interviewed, went to a Catholic church that was a refuge for many other of the refugees. And uh, we interviewed a number of them. And as it happens, and I'm sure you've seen this too, when you start interviewing people, people just crowd around. And everybody wanted to tell their story about what happened to them. And after the interviews, one woman came up to me and she gave me a piece of candy. And uh, she gave me this candy uh, as a sign of hospitality. And it was probably the only thing that she had left in the world that she could show some hospitality. And so I keep the New Testament and the piece of candy as a you know, reminder. We, don't, we, we just... Who thinks about a piece of candy, but it's if it's everything, this is the last exactly. morsel that they have uh, of, of something sweet. It's everything. It's, That's it's right. The, it's, it's the woman putting in her, her last alm. 
And there are thousands of Fadis, there are thousands of women who lost almost everything, thousands of families like that. And it's just a reminder of our brothers and sisters who are there right now in the Middle East, uh, persecuted by ISIS, expelled from their homes, who have very little uh, future, at least right now, that they can see. Chris is going to continue to tell us about what he experienced in northern Iraq and how we can help those believers who are facing persecution by ISIS. And up next, an important update that you need to see, an impoverished tribe of Jewish people who desperately need your help. Stay with me. Your gracious gift in support of the work of Jewish Voice right now will make you a vital part of providing life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. Today, we are urgently preparing for one of our next medical clinics to bless a remote Lost Tribes community in Zimbabwe who clearly have ties to the ancient people of Israel particularly the Levites, and have been practicing distinctly Jewish customs for centuries. Our medical teams will provide more than just physical care and comfort. They will share God's love and the good news that Jesus is their promised Messiah. Today, we urgently need your help to equip and fund this vital upcoming outreach. Time is literally running out for many of the most vulnerable there, especially infants and toddlers. You can help save them, but you must act now. Will you be a blessing to these needy Jewish people? Call or click right now to share life-saving help, and we'll say thank you by sending you the book by Jonathan's guest, Chris Mitchell, which was highlighted on today's broadcast. In Destination Jerusalem, CBN News Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell takes you to the front lines of the conflicts burning through the Middle East today, including the spread of ISIS, the ongoing isolation of Israel, and the struggle for Jerusalem. As you read, you'll learn how to prepare for what lies ahead in what may be the most challenging days of our lives. If God has blessed you with the means to share a gift of $100 or more today, to help bless some of the neediest Jewish people on earth, we'll also send you our beautiful and practical Afghan throw. This specially created Afghan carries the spiritual reminder to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It will make a comforting and inspirational addition to your home. Please remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. To share a gift in support of this vital outreach and request your thank you resources, please call, click, or write now. And remember, your generous gift will make you a part of extending life-saving medical help to some very needy Jewish people. Once again, time is of the essence for many of these people. Please call, write, or click right now. I'm back with CBN News Bureau Chief in Jerusalem, Chris Mitchell, who's just written a new book. It's called Destination Jerusalem, ISIS, Convert or Die, Christian Persecution and Preparing for the Days Ahead. You quote Prime Minister Netanyahu as saying, when militant Islam succeeds anywhere, it's emboldened everywhere. That's why Israel's fight is not just our fight, it's your fight. Mm -hmm. That's true. Israel is on the front lines. Israel is sort of the canary in the, in the mine right now against radical Islam. If you've been to Israel many times and to Jerusalem, uh, if you go to the northern border, you'll see Hama uh, Hezbollah that has thousands of rockets aimed at Israel. If you go to their southern border, you'll find Hamas that has maybe uh, 14,000 or more rockets aimed at Israel. If you go to the east, you'll find Iran. So they're on the front lines, but their battle is the same as our what battle. A pressure cooker. Exactly. We as a nation don't seem to believe it when they say you're the big, they see you as the big exactly. Satan, we're just the little Satan. Mm -hmm. And this idea that if somehow we stop supporting Israel, all the terrorism will go away. Right. That's just absurd, isn't it? Uh, it? It is. I mean, a lot of people say if they solve the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, then all the Middle East is going to be peaceful. But if you look around and you see, regardless of what happens with the Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict or supposedly two-state solution, Hezbollah is dedicated to the eradication of Israel. Hamas, in its charter, says that they want to uh, eliminate Israel. Just exactly. give, give land. Mm hmm settle this in a two-state solution, but in reality, that then becomes a staging ground for the next step, That's right? That's right, yeah. Push Israel into the mm -hmm. sea and ultimately, world domination. They've said it so clearly. Yeah. 
We don't seem to be listening. And we talked to a uh, Iranian expert, his name is Manashi Amir, and we talked to him a while ago about this, and he said what Iran's uh, goal is, they first want to defeat Judaism, and then they want to destroy Christianity. And so they see this as a religious struggle against both Judaism and Christianity. That's why they call Israel the, the little Satan and the United States the great Satan. Yeah. Chris, you know, as a, as a Jewish believer, as a Jew, yeah. I think about things like the Spanish Inquisition or the pogroms when I right. hear things like this. And of course, the, 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 the Nazis uh, who were committed to world conquest. And mm -hmm. here we are again exactly in the next century mm -hmm. facing a group that... Uh, wants to dominate us all. And when you look at the horrific pictures of beheadings and, and people being burned alive, how can people that claim to love God do such things? Well, they, they cite the Quran and they, they say that, uh, for example, in uh, Surah 812, it says to strike terror into the unbelievers. And, and it's something that they, this is their, their uh, vision uh, of what Islam is. They cite the Quran, they cite the teachings of Muhammad, and they say they're doing this in the name of God. And so it's Christians that, that they see as the enemy, people, ethnic groups like the Yazidis, even Muslims who don't ascribe to their, their brand of Islam, they see as the enemy. The infidel. Exactly. Why so politically correct to say Islam is a religion of peace and love when it's producing that kind of fruit? You know the Bible says you'll know them by the, you'll know the tree mm -hmm, by its right. fruit, and the fruit is death and destruction, and conquest for world domination. I don't see that as very good fruit. No. Why, why the why the soft sell? Well, it is political correctness. It's just trying to obfuscate exactly what's obvious to, to most people. Uh, you know, when they're beheading 21 Coptic Christians or burning a Jordanian pilot alive, uh, this is what they see as, as going chapter and verse by the Quran as they understand it. Yeah. What do we need to know, Chris? What do people watching need to know about ISIS that we're either not hearing or not paying attention to. Uh, they they have an agenda that that is to come back combat against Western civilization, and they see us as the enemy. And whether we believe in them or not, this is what their final goal is. And so we need to understand uh, what their goals are. And I think that we need to be informed. One thing they too, they want to do too, Jonathan, is I think they have an agenda of trying to strike terror into us. And they said that is something they they uh, follow in the Quran. And so when you see a quote unquote lone wolf attack when Sydney, Australia, Ottawa, Canada, London, even more Oklahoma when this woman was tragically beheaded by a fellow worker, uh, these are things that they want to strike terror into us. And, and so we need to guard ourselves, uh, gird our, gird our uh, loins of our mind and guard our hearts against the kind of fear that's coming against us. Daunting question, can ISIS be defeated? I think they can. I think they can be militarily. I think that's one aspect of this battle against, uh, against ISIS. I think right now there's not the political will to go ahead and do what's necessary uh, militarily to go ahead and defeat this group. And uh, it, it probably was much easier a little over a year ago when they were, they were going through Mosul and other places, but now it seems a much more complicated uh, scenario. Is this snowballing? Are they gaining strength with their... With well, every to victory. a certain degree, they're gaining strength. And what now? They're con consolidating part of their power. But right now, they're being uh, uh, confronted by the Kurds, the Peshmerga, which is the Kurdish military. And they are incredible fighters. They I are know. incredible fighters. Yeah, and we had the opportunity to be on the front lines with many of the Kurdish uh, fighters. And they are brave. And Peshmerga is a Kurdish word that means those that face death. And uh, you really can see that by seeing them in action on the front lines. And they see themselves as sort of the protectors of many of the groups in that area, and especially the Christians. I mean, realistically, can they defeat ISIS on their own? Well, that's a good question, because I, I think they could if they were trained and equipped. And that's the thing that we kept hearing on the front lines of many of the officers that we talked to, is that uh, we are willing to fight ISIS, but we need the kind of equipment that ISIS has. Ironically, when uh, ISIS took over Mosul back in June of 2014, they captured a lot of Iraqi equipment that was provided by the United States. So they're very well equipped. 
And, uh, and the Kurds just kept telling us, if we have that same kind of equipment, that we could not only protect ourselves, but we could advance. Generally. Why aren't they getting it? They're not getting it for a couple of reasons. I think politically, and talk about political correctness, uh, I think because the Baghdad government, which has been Shiite dominated, doesn't want to seem to give that military equipment that has been designated to the Kurdish uh, military. Uh, so it actually has been, by, it been stopped by the Baghdad government. And I think some of the geopolitics plays in as well. I think Turkey, because they see the Kurds as a potential enemy eventually, I think they're trying to stop some of that military equipment. The great danger is reversing back to 1939, where I think of Neville Chamberlain just taking the position of appeasement. That's right. Until it was almost too late. Mm -hmm. I, I think if the Nazis hadn't turned on, on Russia, we would, it exactly. could have been a different yeah. story. Yeah, and so. I, you know, you mentioned Netanyahu earlier. Uh, Churchill at that time, he was the lone voice in the Western world speaking out against uh, the rise of Nazi Germany. And I think right now, and we can talk about Iran, but Netanyahu is the one that's speaking out not only against ISIS, but Iran. But I, I want to go back first and talk about Iran. Sure. Because ISIS is one great threat, but then you have Iran and Bibi Netanyahu, Prime mm -hmm. Minister Netanyahu, says the single greatest threat here is Iran developing a nuclear weapon, mm -hmm. and we don't seem to be doing much about it to stop that. No, it seems like the negotiations that have been going on, we talk about in the book about uh, in, 19, in, in uh, 2013, we went up to Moscow with Pre uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu to meet with President uh, Putin at the time. And uh, he was trying to convince Putin to vote against what was then in 2013, this intimate, intimate agreement in Geneva. And uh, he failed to uh, convince Putin not to sign on. But what they did in 2013, and now they're doing again, in Lausanne is they're allowing Iran to continue its enrichment of uranium. Where, where, where do you see this headed? Uh, there was a quote by Churchill who said that, you know, you were given the choice between dishonor and war, you chose dishonor, you'll have war. I think it makes war more likely, not less, in the Middle East because I think if Iran is emboldened and it has this ability to enrich uranium and, uh, and develop a nuclear weapon, then what's going to happen in the Middle East is Saudi Arabia sees Iran as a threat. They're going to want a nuclear weapon. Egypt and other nations in the Middle East. Now, I've read both the, the scriptures that you've read and I've read the end of the book, uh -huh. both books. So right. you, you believe it all comes to a head in Jerusalem. That's right. That it, that it, that it all is moving towards Jerusalem. Talk about that. Well, that's why I wrote the, the title is Destination Jerusalem, uh, because in so many ways, whether it's ISIS, ISIS sees part of their theology is that Jerusalem is going to be their capital of this future caliphate, this Islamic empire ruled by Sharia law. So they're on their way to Jerusalem. They, they may not get there, but that's where they're heading. Uh, and so also, and you've seen it over, over the years, the Jewish people have returned to the land of Israel. For the last 150 years or so, this has been one of the miracles of the world, the miracle of Israel being reborn. And they have such a fierce attachment to the city of Jerusalem. I mean, for, uh, when they uh, have a Passover meal, it's next year in Jerusalem. Yom Kippur, it's next year in Jerusalem. So now, so in 1967, when, when Israel recaptured Jerusalem, it was just a milestone in Jewish history. Now they have Jerusalem. And so they have such a fierce attachment to the, what they call the eternal undivided capital of the Jewish Chris, state. I, I'm so intrigued by the statement that Jesus himself, himself makes in Luke, I think it's 21, mm -hmm. chapter 21, yeah. verse 24, where he says, Jerusalem will be trodden down by the Gentiles, by the nations, by the, by the uh, goyim. That's right. If you yeah. will, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. What a word. Exactly. And so we're living in, a, in a, such a prophetic age, uh, you know, not only for the, for the Jewish people. And now we also see Christians around the world focused on Jerusalem like never before, praying for the peace of Jerusalem in unprecedented numbers. And, uh, you know, in Isaiah 62, 6 and 7, it says, you know, give the Lord no rest till he makes Jerusalem a praise in all the earth. And I think we're seeing that fulfilled as well. Chris, my brother, I believe this is your greatest hour. Thanks for coming with us <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. on the program today. Okay. Really good to have you. If you want to understand the impact that ISIS is having in the Middle East, 
how prophecy is unfolding and how history's final chapters will be written in Jerusalem. Be sure to get a copy of Chris's latest book, Destination Jerusalem, Eyewitness Account of Prophecies Unfolding in the Middle East. But first, an important update on a tribe of Jewish people who desperately need your help. Stay with me. Your gracious gift in support of the work of Jewish Voice right now will make you a vital part of providing life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. Today, we are urgently preparing for one of our next medical clinics to bless a remote Lost Tribes community in Zimbabwe who clearly have ties to the ancient people of Israel, particularly the Levites, and have been practicing distinctly Jewish customs for centuries. Our medical teams will provide more than just physical care and comfort. They will share God's love and the good news that Jesus is their promised Messiah. Today, we urgently need your help to equip and fund this vital upcoming outreach. Time is literally running out for many of the most vulnerable there, especially infants and toddlers. You can help save them, but you must act now. Will you be a blessing to these needy Jewish people? Call or click right now to share life-saving help, and we'll say thank you by sending you the book by Jonathan's guest, Chris Mitchell, which was highlighted on today's broadcast. In Destination Jerusalem, CBN News Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell takes you to the front lines of the conflicts burning through the Middle East today, including the spread of ISIS, the ongoing isolation of Israel, and the struggle for Jerusalem. As you read, you'll learn how to prepare for what lies ahead in what may be the most challenging days of our lives. If God has blessed you with the means to share a gift of $100 or more today, to help bless some of the neediest Jewish people on earth, we'll also send you our beautiful and practical Afghan throw. This specially created Afghan carries the spiritual reminder to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It will make a comforting and inspirational addition to your home. Please remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. To share a gift in support of this vital outreach and request your thank you resources, please call, click, or write now. And remember, your generous gift will make you a part of extending life-saving medical help to some very needy Jewish people. Once again, time is of the essence for many of these people. Please call, write, or click right now. I want to show you a tribe in Zimbabwe that has retained Old Testament traditions and rituals for over 2,500 years. They're called the Lemba, and we recently held a wonderful outreach to provide medical care, dental care, eye care, eyeglasses, medicines, all completely free of charge. But most importantly, we shared the Messiah with them, and many, many came to faith, thousands in fact, and it was people just like you that helped us to make a difference in their lives. Take a look. In one of the most remote areas of southern Zimbabwe, a team of 51 volunteers were joined by 120 national workers. And together, they just finished one of the most challenging and rewarding Jewish voice outreaches to date. In a week full of both work and ministry, the Lord's hand was clearly seen as Jewish Voice conducted its very first medical outreach to the impoverished Lemba Jewish community. We've seen children who, who couldn't speak, they couldn't hear, they, they were, they, they couldn't do anything. I, I'm shocked. And then, and then they can speak and, and they can hear and they can say their names. Babies that, that there was this 18 month old baby that, that couldn't even stand up or sit up, nothing. And, and then it had uh, witchcraft bracelets on its wrist. They were cut off and the baby sat up immediately. I mean, <laughs> eyes, eyes to see with adults. I've seen so many miracles. I, my heart is, is just filling up. I, I'm, I'm forever going to be changed over this entire experience. It's the best thing that has ever happened to me. The Lord is looking down on this with favor and he's looking down on this that he loves culture and he loves diversity. And uh, I had such a warm, wonderful feeling that 
Uh, the Lemba here are very gentle and loving people, and that the Lord has not forgotten them, and that they have retained as much as they possibly can of their culture and of their, um, of their Jewishness. There's so much more to do. We'd love to have you join us on one of our medical outreaches. For more information or to volunteer, you can call 800-299-9374, or you can go to www.pleaseanswerthecall.org. All one word, pleaseanswerthecall.org. Since 1967, Jewish Voice has been dedicated to proclaiming the good news that Yeshua, Jesus, is Messiah and Savior to the Jew first and also to the nations. Now, one way we do this is by helping some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. We've been able to demonstrate God's love by providing these people with medical care, dental care, eye care, eye surgeries, all free of charge, but most importantly, we share the gospel. And it's because of your faithful support that we're able to make a difference in their lives. If your answer is yes, we have some very special ways of saying thank you today. I've selected some helpful and encouraging resources that I'd like to send you. You can call or click or right now to share and request them all. And remember, your generous gift is going to be used to help some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. Hey, by the way, we're on Facebook. You can check us out by going to facebook.com slash Jewish Voice. Imagine celebrating the miraculous power of the Passover against the breathtaking backdrop of the sparkling Eastern Caribbean Sea on board a luxurious Royal Caribbean cruise ship. Rejoice at the Messianic Passover Seder led by Rabbi Jonathan Burness, remembering God's mighty hand delivered the Jewish people from bondage. Worship because the miracle held a mystery revealed and completed in Yeshua, Jesus, the Passover lamb, and ultimate sacrifice for our sins. This is the Jewish Voice seven-day Passover cruise on the turquoise waters of the Eastern Caribbean and the enchanting white sand islands of St. Martin, St. Thomas, and Nassau, Bahamas. You don't want to miss the beauty, worship, and celebration as we share the mystery and the miracle of the Passover on the seas. Join Jonathan Burness and Jewish Voice April 16th through 23rd, 2016. Cabin Space is limited. Book now for the best rooms and rates. Call or click today. Well, that's all the time we have for today as I leave you. I want to remind you, as I do in every program, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The Bible promises they shall prosper that love thee. Until next time, this is Jonathan Bernus saying shalom and God bless you. Jewish Voice is made possible by the support of friends and partners like you.